last month, Neil and I went to Marina Bay Sands. We, there was a, a comedy and rap special called Modula It's a Rap show at MBS that featured all local music uh, uh, musicians and comedians. And we just had a blast looking at the quality and enjoying the quality of the show that, that was there that night. And one of the acts that really stood out to us was a comedian named Kamarul Hazik. And Kamarul, uh, as he finished his set, Neil and I looked at each other because it was a it was a mandate. We looked at each other and said, "We got to have this guy on the show." So we are so happy to have you with us today, Kamarul. Welcome to the show. Hey, thank you guys so much for having me. That was <clears throat> yeah, that was a night even for me. The the yeah, Majula t- Life is a rap. Tell us about that was- experience for you. For me personally, it was uh, so weird because uh, so many in terms of Singapore A-listers were on the show. In terms of, uh, like, there was uh, Riley, John Chua, the whole Sam Willows gang with Sheikh Haikal. Mm-hmm. And Sheikh Haikal, who I've loved since I was a little child, since I was a teeny boy. Not and that you're saying he's that makes... old, right? <laughs> <laughs> you got to be he's careful. Old. <laughs> I... I, uh, I He's okay. He's okay. He's not that old. I'm fine. I'm 29, so let's get. I, I, I think he. he he's he'll, just like 10 years older. So yeah, don't worry about it. <laughs> anyway, so what it else was, struck you about that uh, night when you were when you were up on stage and and even just watching the other acts? I mean, so many people performed that night. Yeah, uh, you guys were doing it. Was it a, like a long show? It felt like a nice compact show because there were so many different acts. It but, wasn't compact, but it was a good show. Yeah, it was a good show. Was, yeah? Yeah. So yeah. for me. Uh, when they brought me on, the idea was as comedians, we were there so that they can set up all their, their band stuff behind the curtain. Uh, right. But that was, uh, but then that means I just had like seven to ten minutes of just audience, in, like my own audience time, which was amazing because I haven't had that for before that, prior to that, maybe a year plus. Mm. Of just, uh, especially at the MBS theater. You know how nice that theater is? It's very I, nice. I I I I've, I've used to perform at like dingy bars, you know, not <laughs> MBS theaters. I don't. <laughs> Spotlight was brighter of, than I've ever had it. Yeah, that smell of stale beer, right, and sticky floors that you walk over. <laughs> yeah, it, it was nice to finally not have it to wipe down the soles of my shoes after the show. <laughs> that was nice. What was your What did your family think? I mean, your family must be so proud. I mean, what What were their thoughts? Were they there? I mean, how, how What was their uh, reaction? N- n- they weren't there, but uh, it's it's not. It's it's uh, weird because they know what I do, but I don't. I, they've never been to a show I've been on. I've been doing this for about seven years now, but it's also because they don't understand what stand up is. Yeah, how do yeah, you explain because, it to them? Uh, it's it's. I don't think it's just a me thing. I think it's a problem for a lot of comedians here in Singapore to explain what we do, hmm. because when I say I talk, and people listen, and then they laugh. It's either a clown that I get compared to, right, or like a radio DJ. But radio DJs, you don't oh. have the audience in front of you, yeah. <laughs> because to them, that's all they had. Like, oh, you talk, and people listen. So it's either radio, or you you're just doing comedy. Like they don't get it because especially in uh, the way <laughs> the Malay people grew up, all the, all the comedy we knew was like sketch and skits. Hmm. There was really a, especially Singapore, stand-up is maybe three generations old in terms of comedians. There was the Kuma generation, and then after that is the Faz and Rishi, and then I'm part of like the third generation. So it's very young, so we're still having to educate people what stand-up is. Hmm. Hmm. And what, I mean, what, the, what is, uh, how does your family act as sort of inspiration? Because I remember you talked a bit about your family, so how does your family yeah, serve let's... as like inspiration uh, for you? How, how about your mom? Let's ask about your mom and, and having a Malay <laughs> mom, huh? Give, yeah, give us your uh, best material on that. <laughs> oh man, my, bless her heart, she, she, I, put through her, I put her through a lot. Uh, because I'm the oldest, and especially like especially Asian families, being the oldest in the family, you're supposed to be like the leader. And I've done everything to just disappoint her because everything I pursue was everything she didn't expect. Right? Or want. So it, yeah, or what. So in a way, I set the bar very low for my younger brothers. So I've helped them out a lot, but they decide to just overachieve. I'm like, why are you trying so hard? Like I, I set the bar low for everyone and so we can just chill. No, but she, uh, 
So whenever like used to do shows, we, uh, <coughs> I would have to like come back because it's hard to explain to the Malay mother that I was at a bar performing, mm. right? So for years I was just ah oh, I had prayers. There was <laughs> <laughs> a certain kind of prayer, right? A certain yeah, kind of yeah, prayer for like for only the first two three years. After that, I she understood, <laughs> and now we're fine. She knows what I do. <laughs> oh, that's funny. that's funny. Well, you talk a lot about life in the heartlands. You talk a lot about mm. food. What's your favorite thing to riff on when you get going? Uh, I, I, you had a, actually a very funny bit about uh, food uh, that we saw that night. Um, oh. And uh, and I think it was a fat, uh, greasy food or something or uh, unhealthy oh, uh, food. Like how there was a there was a whole story about this uh, personal trainer who called Malay food unhealthy. Yeah, yeah right so yeah so i went on a rant about how like this much it has put this this is not this food is just not food it's food plus the much it's trauma plus everything she had to go through to learn how to cook that like her mother yelling to her about how she she doesn't cook well enough she'll never find a husband like i just went on a rant so like, when it comes to favorite things i like to run about is usually uh th- i guess not topical per se i would like change it up but especially things that anger me i like things that if i read something and i'm like anger me and it brings some sort of emotion forward like okay i can make something funny out of this because i already feel the emotion reading through the story already Mm. so for that video when i saw the guy just scraping the food that i ate as a child right growing up and this is just going ah this is unhealthy i'm like you came to the wrong cuisine for healthy food you (laughs) You just, this isn't the food. I, I don't think I've ever seen my mom cook one healthy dish in my life. <laughs> but it's good. You know, the food's good. It's just not, you came to the wrong cuisine. Yeah, I mean, it's like reading what it says on the tin, right? If you're going to a Malay Muslim store, it's pretty obvious it's going to taste good, right? But it, it, it ain't no salad bar, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you go, uh, you, you get your greens from uh, Tanjung Paga Cafe. Don't, don't go to a Nasi Padang <laughs> stall <laughs> expecting gr- healthy greens we, i had like, like i remember once when i was a child like, okay not when i was a child but when i was like on the form- my formative years trying to like okay i used to play football so I, was, like, I need to get healthier so i told my mom to like can you like make something healthy for me so that i can you know be an athlete i thought i was going to be the, the next uh raihan rahman the next uh isan fandi you know and when i was a child i want to be a footballer so i asked her to cook something healthy the next day she cooked veggies but it was a dish in malay called sayo lama which is literally translated to fatty vegetables so i don't know how <laughs> the vegetable like she cooked the health out of that dish but it was delicious <laughs> with no nutritional value whatsoever your mom that's a that's a great tagline actually for your mom your mom cooks the health out of vegetables i love that yeah <laughs> cook the health out of the dish that could even be the name yeah the name of her next book <laughs> I cook the yeah, she does a cookbook the... <laughs> but where is she now uh Kamara? where is she now you've been doing stand up i know you said you started in about 2015 mm. so you've been doing it six or seven years obviously the yeah. covid slowed down everything i mean is she quietly proud when you bring the money home is she proud i mean where where is she with it now Oh, I, I, I mean, a couple of years ago, the only thing, especially in the entertainment business, she never understands like live shows, right? So if you're on TV, then it makes sense to her. So the only like proud moment sort of I've had was when I was on Comedy Central Asia, where I got on the season four yeah. of comedy, stand-up live. So that was like the thing where like she saw me on TV where she went, oh, okay, I see what you're doing now. Then it, 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 then it became real. Because hmm. before that, it was this make-believe world where I left and come back like at midnight. So she didn't know what was going on. So once hmm. like that, there was you were a, going to like, you were going to prayers, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Of course, <laughs> I dressed appropriately and changed in the bus. It's fine. It's, uh... <laughs> when well, so what's on your mind now? What what's uh, what's happening in the heartlands that people should know about that's getting you upset? or getting your attention uh, when you think about uh, life in Singapore. There's always lots of issues mm. happening. We've got otters biting people. We've got uh, this and that happening, uh, you know, in government. There's, there's always something happening around town. What, what's uh, people now traveling back and forth to uh, across the causeway, right? Ah, there's okay. a lot happening. One thing, especially this, this week, what has showed me is uh, Singaporeans. Don't like, we just made it back to Johor. Don't embarrass us yet. 
yeah. you know, too late. The amount of people who are jacking up their cars, the shaking, I understand. My dad did it growing up. You know, you shake the car a little bit to get extra extra fuel in there. But you bring in a jack, like you're not at a workshop, oh. guy. Please, <laughs> jack jacking up the car as they're filling the petrol and so they can get yes. more in the tank. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah. So they lean the car. And listen, we, it's been two years. Like the, uh, some of them, especially Joe Ho, they are waiting for us. They are more than happy to acknowledge and like bring us in back because like they've missed us. And then you, f- the first week you went in, you're already causing stir. Like stop this. I want to go back. So, like it's just opened up. Let me let me have fun. Uh, uh, when you go, uh, when you go across the causeway, I know you've done bits mm. and bobs and that. I mean, how do Malaysians, Malaysia, Malays. How? Wh- what do they think of Singapore? Is I'm always curious to get that perspective because you do some shows up there. Uh, it's definitely that we have a. Uh, we are definitely a bit more stuck up than they are. So I do play that little snobby thing when I'm on stage where like, uh, I'm like feels good to be in the third world. I say snarky <laughs> stuff like that. But then it's just to play a, like a character of what they're of expecting course. of me anyway. So uh, it's more of that. Uh, but I get away with it because it's a weird like dynamic where I go there. And then even though I'm Singaporean, I'm also part of the majority in Malaysia. So I'm part of like Malay people in Malaysia. So yeah. it's a majority there. So I will play with the expectations of I'm a majority, but I came from Singapore. So they hate me, but they're Malay, so they like me. <laughs> so in it's a, a love hate a literal love yeah, it's hate a love hate love hate thing and then i will just uh, they, it's and then you try to win them back with the jokes you try to mm. so then i'll go back to my family and start making relatable back to them but yeah it's fun especially kl they have a bunch of great rooms there and i'm looking definitely go, i'm going up in may i think to just mm. have a weekend there it's been a while so but, the comedy scene is improving now that's the important thing it's 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 slow definitely. yeah slow but it's on the mend yeah, yeah. So, uh, speaking, especially like to a lot of the comedians here and the in- people booking shows and stuff, uh, especially in this coming month, uh, May, and uh, did, uh, did a lot of shows are coming back because during the pandemic, we lost like our only like full time comedy club, the place called Mary Lion. So, we lost that. So, now everyone's like rushing back to just put on back the open mics, put on back the shows. Uh, I think also like because they finally can have live entertainment at venues now. So everyone's also like asking like for comedy shows to be back. So we definitely so everyone should definitely check it out when it's back, because uh, that's the bread and butter of it all. Like the audience interaction of like that small fifty to sixty packs mm. of people mm. in like a grimy bar or a small comedy club is where all like the jokes come from. Before mm. we go to like some prestigious MBS stage, you know, like we have to talk it, talk it in like a dimly lit sixty seater room yeah. for that. Makes sense. We're talking to Kamarul Hazik, uh, uh, Heartland's comedian. And uh, Kamarul, you're exactly right. And Neil and I talked about that after the MBS show. We looked at each other and said, where where can you even go to hear a comedian these days? I mean, never mind COVID, right? But there there are no, no small rooms. If you go to any other major city in the world, you know, in New York or London or anywhere, yeah. there's a million you know, dingy, smelly, smoky bars uh, that people can... But also comedy pra- stores. Practice their I mean, craft. Melbourne has comedy stores. And the comedy uh, stores London as well. Does, uh, yeah. And so on and so on. What's it going to take for Singapore to to develop that kind of infrastructure for guys like you and women as well that want to practice their, their trade? Oh, I mean, uh, the first step is there will always be, I think anywhere in the world, there will always be an open mic for comedians to perform at there'll always be so especially here now everyone's working on an open mic night so there will be i think coming up three days of the week where there is an open mic for comedians so where where uh you can follow their instagram pages so i think comedy masala is coming back in a couple of like in a month so i'm gonna do that soon uh follow kopi o comedy club on instagram that's uh me jackie fakafaz we're all working on that our own like open mic slash a week uh, monthly shows, and then there's comics at the castle. So there's a lot. Let's spread out across Singapore, but hmm. yeah. So everyone's trying to get back because it's been so long since we just had open mics. I've had the opportunity to perform during the pandemic because I, I I I've been doing stand up for a little bit. But all these new guys, man, they don't have a stage at all. So we're trying to bring back hmm. the stage so like yeah. new up and coming comedians can try out because because unless we promote it ourselves. There's not really an avenue for any of these people to find out where shows are. Mm. 
And generally, yeah, because yeah. we're, I'm always fascinated with comedians in Singapore because we are such a multiracial, cultural language differences and so on and so on. I always wonder, I'm always interested to see where comedians pitch their material. You know, obviously, if you go to Malaysia, you can speak Malay. It's a bit different. So in Singapore, I mean, what are the things generally that you think this will definitely hit or it won't hit? Or when have you been surprised? You know, because I find that so fascinating. Oh, at Singapore, a lot of the time, especially when I was <clears throat> coming up, it was a coin flip to the audience you would get. Uh, so it could be expats, it could be uh, locals, it could be particularly just one race of people. Like you never really knew how you. So the only way you could actually do it in Singapore before that was just to do it in a Singaporean's point of view. Uh, so, but even us, like, I think because it's a young sea, we a lot of comedians, uh, the race jokes are there to to be used if you ever need it. It's a mm. very easy topic to touch on. Uh, because everyone grew up with each other anyway. So it's, it's always a thing that you could reach out. But the things that don't work, especially in Singapore, is uh, I guess don't touch on touchy topics unless you're really skilled at it. You know, like unless mm. you've been doing this a decade and you know how to play around with jokes. Uh, leave the, the touchy topics like religion and all that to experienced comedians. Uh, don't, mm. If you're, it's your first year in, just... Don't do that. Don't, you don't know. Do you have the skill set yet? You're going to get in trouble. I don't know. That's on you. We'll help, but it's on you. But I do think it's come a long way. I mean, uh, in the time that I've been here, watching mm. yourself, Faka Faz, Rishi, uh, Chinese comedians like Jackie, ribbing each other's races in a fun yeah. way. I, I, I actually right. think that shows that Singapore's come a long way. Yeah. Now, not nasty, not personal. I mean, I saw Rishi do a routine once about uh it's, it's one of the funniest things i've ever seen where he talks about the exam questions are always oh, about indian yeah. guys still why is it the indian guys you know johnny <coughs> has this and then the indian fella comes and he takes seven apples <laughs> and he takes three <laughs> apples why have you got the indian guy always the thief in the mass <laughs> questions you know that kind of thing that we're starting to play with in the oh, singapore yeah. comedy scene i think it's so refreshing come all you know i'm sure you're seeing yeah. it as well oh definitely uh it's it's a thing because it's the thing that connects us all. So especially with the, the topics I choose to like talk about, maybe food or whatever, everyone can connect to it. But race is the one thing where it's also, I'm not going to lie, it's so fun to play with. Of course it is. Because, it, because the, the, the key is to be like, you, you, as a comedian, you play with tension. You, you, you make everyone a little bit tense and then you pull the rug underneath them, make the whole room laugh, right? And uh, especially in Singapore, race... Like the, the tension you get from like just doing it right, is uh, you, you just take the air out of the room and then you just bring it back to life. So back, I remember I used to do a joke uh, about growing up like playing football at the void deck and like the government is trying to stop playing football at the void deck, which is the wrong thing to do because that's where you meet other people, you meet other races, and that's where you learn like the stereotypes of each other. So people think Malay people are lazy, and Chinese people will like come to play football. But it's not that we're lazy. It's because Chinese people own the ball. So we're just waiting. <laughs> <laughs> so w w the Malay people are just waiting at the void deck for them to come down. So we, we, wait. we waited so long, we learned to play the guitar. Like, it's, it's that whole thing. <laughs> so it's very fun to play with. Because there's, a, there's, there's such a... Uh, there's a lot of different uh, things you can touch on. And it's just a topic that, oh, it's so fun. Yeah, we need more of that in Singapore, Cameroon. We need a lot more of that. Yeah, people need to chill a whole lot more, don't they? And uh, have a few more laughs and a little less stress and tension in their lives. Hey, w do you have another gig uh, coming up at anytime soon that, that uh, folks might be able to come and see or nothing yet? Uh, there is an open mic, but I don't know. It's, it's just sold out, so I don't need to promote that. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, please uh, follow the Instagram pages of all these like, com like comedy rooms. So Kopio Comedy Club, Comedy Masala. Because shows are going to be coming back. Follow me on Instagram at QAMSHOT, come short, so that I will just post on IG stories of whenever shows are happening. Because even now, whatever, even if I'm not on the show, I'm helping promote it because we need to bring back up the whole scene again after yeah. so long. Absolutely. And we're happy to promote you. If after this camera all, you can paste all those links, any links you want, into our Money FM Facebook live chat. Right. Why not? It'll be most appreciated. Yeah. Hey, we got to leave it there. Well. Uh, Kamaril Hazik, thanks so much for being with us today. We wish you all the luck in your uh, comedy career, and, and we hope to come out and, and see you again, too, and support you uh, whenever we can get to a show that's not sold out. 
<laughs> thank you guys so much. Thank you guys so much for having me. It's, it's great. Thanks, Cameron. And next time Thanks. you come on, I want your mother to come on as well. Yes, okay. bring your I'll mom. I'll try it. I'll try it. Bring your mom. I will, just, I will, go I will. The, just go into the kitchen and, and we can interview you guys in the kitchen while she's cooking something. <laughs> no, nah, she's asleep because she has to cook for breakfast later. Cooking the health so, out of vegetables, your mom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Take care, man. Thanks, Thank you. Carol. Take care. Appreciate Thank it. you, guys. <laughs>